Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another career mode episode. Today we have got the month of December coming up for you. As you can see, quite a jam-packed month indeed. So I split the episode today into two post-com games and three live ones as we play five games in the episode but complete the whole month. There's also an FA Cup round three tie coming up as well that wasn't in that calendar. So a lot of games that we had to get through in this December month. So we started off with West Brom, which I decided to sim. We were then going to take on um, Monaco in the Champions League as a post-com game, followed by Villa, and then we'll jump into the live comms. So I'm only going to be showing you the goals as the highlights from these two games that you're going to be seeing. So we'll get through this pretty quickly, and we can enjoy the live part of the episodes. Of course, this game here is all about top seed in the Champions League group that we're currently in. Both teams already qualified. All we're playing for is the team that gets first seed and the team that gets second. At the moment, we're two points clear of, uh, of Monaco. And heading into game, all we needed is a draw to make sure of that top seed. But, obviously, we're getting for the win. We didn't just want to draw the game. We wanted to prove a point. And inside five minutes, we started off the game really well. Richarlison on the left-hand side put the cross in. And there was Kingsley Coman to head home and make it. Everton won. Monaco nil after only five minutes. So, I was feeling pretty good about that start to the game. And I knew for, for sure there was going to be more chances in this one. After only half an hour, Coman again involved this time, though, to turn provider as he laid it on a plate for Ivan Herrera to score in a rare Champions League start. Of course, hasn't been playing in the uh, in the Champions League, I don't think. Premier League, definitely not. Um, and he's been playing the Cups and such. But he was then involved for our third goal in this one. Orsic striking it into the bottom corner from distance. And I actually gave you guys another look at this because it's a really nice finish from Osic and to be fair the guy's growing very very nicely as well he's at like an 87 rated player right now so you know if we were to continue the series he would probably become the best midfielder in the world of football but with FIFA 20 right around the corner we don't have the time to do that but nevertheless from our first game of the day we'd actually come away with a 3-0 victory against Monaco securing that top seed and awaiting to see who we were going to get in the Champions League first knockout round so top seed secure it's, it's the best case scenario but with Champions League football um, it doesn't really matter too much because whoever you come up against, I've said this before, generally speaking, it's already going to be a tough game no matter what. So, um, yeah, first, second seed. It's always nice getting the first seed, but it doesn't always make a difference because around elsewhere, you could come up against a really good team that's finished off in second in their group. And, um, yeah, knockout football is different, of course. But following that game, we had Aston Villa in the Premier League and uh, jumped straight into the action with Davinson Sanchez scoring a header. After six minutes, again, some very fast starts in the two games we played off camera and pretty much a carbon copy just before half time. Um, again, another corner from the same side, actually. And again, it was Davis and Sanchez who met it to make it 2-0 Everton. And at half time, we were cruising here against Villa. But it is to be expected when you are pretty much the best side in England at the moment. The second half got back and away and the highlights continued. This move here finished off into the corner by Leon Bailey. Nice move and an even better finish. I have to say that I do think the goalkeeper might have been able to save that. Um, but it was a driven shot, so who knows. But we had one more goal to show you from this one as we continued on to the 62nd minute. Mason Mount here in possession. Ball down the line for Cancelo. And he then plays it back inside to Vinicius Jr. Ball through to the So he laid it on the plate for a second one for our number nine. And another fantastic move capped off. So a 4-0 win against Villa to see out the second game off camera and the final game off camera. However, there is still some sims to show you, which we will jump into now. One against Cardiff and one against Burnley, of which we're still going to be playing both these teams as well later on in the episode, except one of them is simmed against Cardiff. So I simmed both the game against Cardiff, but we do actually play... Burnley away at Turf Moor in the live portion. But this one finished off 2-1 after the 90 minutes. It was, oh, sorry, 3-1 after 90 minutes, I should say. It was the three points. And then the next one against Cardiff, again, it was a similar result. It was a 5-1 victory. But in between that, some news came through. Player of the Year was announced, and it's gone to our very own Vinicius Jr. So, yeah, I'm buzzing to have one of our players as Player of the Year. I'm not sure if I've had it already in this save, but... Yeah, it's cool to see that, especially with the hard work we've been putting in. I mean, we have got a really ridiculous team. I, I genuinely think any one of our numerous players could have got it. But Vinicius Jr. has got it. Maybe um, maybe in the future we might have seen possibly Orsic or Patrick get it. But nevertheless, we're going to end off the post-com highlights here with the game against Cardiff right here. 5-1 in the sim. Let's jump to live as we find out our Champions League first knockout round opponent. Sit back, relax and enjoy. And as we begin off the live part of the episode today then, I thought we'd take a quick look at the round of 16 of the Champions League because the draw's been made and as you can see, 
Our opponents of that will be Leverkusen, of course, from the Bundesliga. Now, Chelsea, Milan, Porto, Barcelona, some interesting ties going on as well in this round of 16 tie. But for us, it is going to be Leverkusen. Having topped our group means that they've come in second. While we're at it as well, let's actually quickly check out the Europa League because we know the Krafschap were in a, in a decent position in the group stages. Did they make it through? They did. And they are playing against Galatasaray. So, yeah, did they win their group in the end? Um, they did. They won all six games. Yes. I'm actually surprised by that, but I'm at the same time really glad because they've they're been able to compete. Where are they currently in the uh, in the Eredivisie? I know this is a tangent that I really didn't want to go on, but it's good to see like a former club of ours doing pretty well. And they're third. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with that. I really am. But for us, action continues then as we go to St. Mary's to take on Southampton. This month actually didn't feature too many tough games, and it's a month in which I felt like if we didn't win pretty much all of these, we're not doing our job correctly. Southampton down in 15th. Cardiff, again, we've still got to play their 17th. And Burnley as well, who are 14th. So, yeah, if you're looking at this, uh, these games, these should theoretically all be wins. But for our first live game of the day, then, um, we're going to take on Southampton. It's a strong team. It should be one that gets the result. And I think the plan of action is to play this Burnley, simming Cardiff in, in that away game in the Premier League because... We've been drawn away against Bradford in the FA Cup. Now, I'd much rather drop points in the league if it means a simming an away game than rather as sim that game against Bradford and potentially maybe even get knocked out as it is away. So that's the reason we're going to do it like that. So the second game against Cardiff, having already sim one of them, is also going to be a sim as well. And so we are off and running here as Bernat will put the first cross of the game into the box. The Southampton 11, it's a five at the back they're playing. It's not a bad side, but it's one we shouldn't have too many issues with. Southampton as well. To speak about this quickly, FIFA 20 out, of course, in 14 days on EA Access, I believe. Southampton are one of the teams I like the look of to potentially start my FIFA 20 journey with. I'm not, I've not yet decided which team as we're offside. Um, I'm actually going to be doing in my first FIFA 20 career mode. So if you've got any suggestions at all that you might want to see, leave me a comment. I'll take a look at them. I'll release a poll closer to the date for us to decide on our first team. But Southampton, I like the look of maybe to start off our FIFA 20 journey. Like I said, I'm not decided yet. Tierney in towards Patrick Catrone, turning on the ball, finding La Celso. La Celso through the minute, yes, you and you're surely 1 0. Simple as that, really, after 10 minutes here. Southampton, it's going to be a very long, long afternoon for them, it seems like, because the reform that we're in at the moment, nobody touches us. They just, they just can't defend this. I mean, it's what, four or five passes, and, and the space opened up. You can see they're all over the place defensively. And when you've got somebody of Vinicius Junior's quality in like that, He's largely going to hit the target and find the back of the net. No chance for the goalkeeper. Southampton inside 10 minutes. Already a goal to nil down. Here is Mason Mount finding Kieran Tierney. It's come from a Southampton free kick into our box. And Tierney's driving forward. Tierney looking for the finish. How close is he here? That's come from Southampton putting a deep free kick into our penalty area. One header later and a pass and we're in behind pretty much. I understand Southampton have to come forward. Now they're a goal to nil down and try and find maybe an equaliser. But if they leave themselves open like that, it's going to get worse for them. And Tierney, you'd expect him to do a little bit better in that position. We know he has got the capability to finish those type of chances. It's this occasion, he's put it over the bar. So, right, one change at the break. Patrick coming on. Off goes Mason Mount. I thought it was going to be more embarrassing on Southampton. But to be fair to them, they've actually played all right in that first half after going 1-0 down. They've uh, settled themselves pretty quickly and I've struggled to really break them down again. So... Fair play to them, because I thought we'd be going in at half-time in a convincing fashion. But no, it is only the one goal we've currently got. As the second half is back on the way, Lacelso immediately looking to attack. Catron's ball through. Pull back for Patrick. What a move that is. 2-0 Everton. Just some saying I expected it to be worse for Southampton heading into half-time. We come out on the other half of it and immediately score. And the move was pretty damn good as well. Let me say that for sure. He's only been on the pitch a matter of minutes. That's literally his first touch, I think, as well. And he's already got a goal. You can see his runs from midfield largely do create chances. <laughs> and he just fires it into the top corner with a left foot. I mean, he could have made it a bit of an easier finish, couldn't he? Just tap it, mate, you know? If you'd have put that over, I'd have been fuming. But he doesn't. Mr. Consistent has done it again. Southampton nil, Everton 2. Alexander-Arnold, Patrick in possession. A little bit fortunate to still have it. But when he is getting on the ball, he's found a brilliant pass through to Vinicius Junior. I feel so bad. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, you'd hate to see it. 
Oh, it's not even a clean shot from Vinicius Jr., which is why I feel pretty bad. Watch, the ball through from Patrick. I was surprised he still had it. And he just, like, he got the slightest of connections on the ball. I mean, it's not a great finish from Vinicius Jr. by any means. It's gone through the legs of McCarthy, who's got a strong touch on it, but not enough to redivert it away from goal. It's gone in, and Southampton now 3-0 down. And McCarthy, oh, you hate to see it. Brilliant football again by us as AWB now on the right-hand side. Lifts it in. Catron at the near post. It's 4-0 Everton. And to be fair, all four of the goals have come from some pretty decent moves. Maybe the Vinicius Jr. Uh, Patrick combo didn't really have the greatest of fluidity with it. But, yeah, some of the football we've played at times here has been unmatched by Southampton. They just can't cope with it. And I'm sure they won't be the only team with this. 4-0 Everton now. And this is a scoreline I kind of semi-expected coming into the game. Being only 1-0 up at the break, I was a bit surprised. But second half performance, we've blown them away. And that will be pretty much that from St. Mary's then. Southampton, hopefully they do all right to stay up this season. But in this game right here, they have been beaten. And uh, it's to be expected, isn't it, really? As Tini wins back possession, there is the full-time whistle. And we move on to our next game, which is going to be Cardiff. And it will be the second time we've seen them today. Because after that, we play Burnley away from home at Turf Moor. And then we go and play Bradford away as well in the FA Cup third round. So, some tricky games coming up still. I say tricky. On paper, they should be relatively simple. But, as we know, away games don't always work that way. And I've been to Turf Moor quite a few times in my FIFA careers. And uh, haven't always had the best of time of things. Is this going to be where we lose our unbeaten season thus far? 19 league games in, and we are 12 points clear. Cardiff in 17. Arsenal managing to climb themselves off of bottom of the table, up into 18th. But Cardiff away from home the day before Christmas, December 24th. Um, Christmas Eve then, what am I on about? But nevertheless, away sim, is this where we're going to lose it? Uh, let's stick with our full strength 11. They've just recently been be uh, beaten by us. 5-1 in a sim, but we were at home. So can we do it again? Sanchez yellow carded. Catrone scores 18 minutes in. Decent start to this one. I've just noticed as well, Jollington scored for Manchester United. Um, of course, has, has left doesn't gone there. And he seems to be doing all right because he keeps getting in their team. De La you getting another one for them as we've conceded an equaliser through Cardiff. Is there going to be a winner for one of these two sides in this game? 10 minutes remain here. And Leon Bailey scores a penalty. And then he's booked. But we do come away with the three points here then. 2-1 win away to Cardiff. Leon Bailey grabbing the winner. And whilst all this is going on, the team of the year for 2023 is due to be announced pretty soon. We've had the defenders shortlist. We've now got the midfielder shortlist. Again, Patrick is in that shortlist. So, yeah, um, he's already made it once in the save. Can he do it again this year? Which would be pretty damn good, wouldn't it? As uh, we move into Burnley next. We've got quite a few defenders as well shortlisted. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us pretty much take five or six of the team of the year spots, if I'm being completely honest with you. Out of curiosity, how long is it until a certain Mbappe returns to the mix? So let me have a quick look at that. He's uh, fit in five weeks, it says. So next episode, hopefully, you might get to see killing Mbappe back. I'm not sure if it will work out like that. But um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed he'll make it back for the next episode. We continue, though, today with Burnley. Following that, with Bradford. And that is December completely done with. Let's see. Can we continue our great run of form into this game against Burnley? Now, I'm going to have to think about my team selection. Because there's going to be a lot of fitness issues here. We go, then. Burnley with their starting team. It looks like this. You'll see ours in a minute. Because we've had to make quite a few changes. Um, I'm going to be honest. I really um, only kind of look at this team and think McNeil maybe is, is one of the players to watch to really hurt us. Villa Libre possibly as well. So bits on the bench is a bit surprising, um, but I don't know obviously what they've been doing because I'm assuming they've played the same sort of games we have in terms of fixtures, congestion. So it might be resting for them as well. Of course, we've got an unbelievable squad depth now at this Everton team. Lunin starts in goal. Cancelo at right back. Lindelof, Sanchez and Tierney as a back four. Um, Patrick in midfield alongside Alexander-Arnold and Orsic. So two new midfielders in there as well. Vinicius Jr. and Coman on the wing. So Coman coming in, of course, for Leon. And Richarlison up front in place of Patrick Catrone. Herrera back onto the bench. feel like I've not given him too much game time in the Premier League this season. But can you blame me when we've got Patrick Catrone, Richarlison and, of course, Mbappe to come back? He's pretty much going to be fourth-choice striker, really, isn't he? As the action will get underway here from Turf Moor. 
And I want a fast start early on. Grab this goal, knock any sort of potential wind out of the sails of Burnley and uh, really quieten them down pretty much in the first whistle. Because if the home fans get behind them, we could be in for quite a tough game here. Orsic wins possession back in a really good area. Now Vinicius Jr. through to Coman. Coman's got the run coming in from Tierney. He sent him a little bit wide, but he still has it here. Kieran Tierney, lovely pullback. What a save. Actually, it's in the post. Why will it not go in? It wasn't even a save, I don't think. I'm pretty sure one of the Burnley players blocked it. And then Richarlison on the return puts it against the post. It's his effort initially who's had the shot. It, yeah, it's blocked by the Burnley player. It's the back foot there, you can see. And then how on earth he doesn't put this in here. Oh, Richarlison, mate. Richarlison, you've got to score this. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Richarlison with a big chance after only 11 minutes to put us in front. And Burnley come forward, but Luna will come out to collect it. Can't believe that hasn't gone in. Here is Patrick towards Richarlison. Not the best first half in an Everton shirt by any means. The shot will be blocked and he sends it through now towards Patrick again. Ball under control. Unable to find anybody in a blue shirt just yet. But Cancelo will get it and swing in the cross. Heaton doesn't get it. He came into no man's land. Didn't even challenge. And Coman heads home. It's slightly fortunate for us, but I don't care. We should have really scored the Richarlison chance early on. And like I mentioned, he is not having the best first half in an Everton shirt that he has had. The ball in from Cancelo. You can see Heaton decides he's going to come and get it. And then doesn't commit to it. And Coman has an easy, a easy task of heading home at that point. He's got all the goal to aim at. Heaton will have to take the responsibility. I've just thought to myself as well. We're six, six seasons in now. How old must Tom Heaton be? Richarlison's ball looking for Vinicius Jr. He might just reach and he does. And it's 2-11. And Everton. oh my goodness me. I'm so fortunate because this was horribly mistimed. Got to be working on these better than that. That's poor from me. But nevertheless, it's worked out. But it's just huge quality. Carries us through. He's having quite a good episode so far. And Burnley, it's gone from bad to worse here as they're two down. Cancelo on the right-hand side in too much space. If you're a Burnley fan, you don't want to be seeing this. A little bit of trickery as he pulls it back. Edge of the area. Patrick's there. And it's a brilliant effort as well. As he makes it number three with an unbelievable shot. <laughs> what on earth was that? What a move it was. Look at this by Cancelo, by the way. A little bit of trickery. They gave him far too much time there, Burnley. Thought about putting the cross in. I went for the low one instead. I actually didn't mean to cut it back towards Patrick. I meant that to just go into the box. But then the shot from Patrick is brilliant as it finds its way in. And it's 3 11 and game set and match if it wasn't already done now. Three points again in the bag. And that will do us for Premier League action today. Because, of course, our final game is that against Bradford. Patrick, look at the run being made by Vinicius Jr. No offside flag either is going to come in because I don't think he is. And Vinicius Jr. will make it number four. Burnley caught in possession in their own half and they gave away the ball. And it was a pass later from Patrick, who is now on the assist charts as well as he feeds Vinicius Jr. And it's the same scoreline we managed against Southampton. Lovely little ball through. No offside flag, rightfully so, actually. There's a couple of Burnley players appealing for it. Um, I will say they've been trying to be a bit more adventurous going forward, committing a few more bodies up into attacking areas. The only issue with that is, of course, you leave yourself exposed when you are trying to defend. So, yeah, not being there at the office, much like Southampton. They're two teams down the bottom half of the table. So I am uh, I'm quite happy we're not making any mistakes here. As I say that, there was a slight mistake. And it's been professional in both performances, really. Made sure we've attacked well and we've defended pretty well, too. As Coman's looking to make it number five here. There's still about 30 seconds or so remaining on the clock. Coman goes down in the box. Penalty kick given. And it will be an opportunity to make this five. And I think Vinicius Jr. will take it because he's on a hat trick. So I can't really say no to that. Usually it'd be Orsic, of course. He is our penalty kick taker. But because he's on a hat trick, Vinicius Jr. will take the penalty for number three. And he's going to score the penalty for number three. It's 5 Leverton. Match ball going home with Vinicius Jr. There we have it then. Full time from Turf Moor. No mistakes in the end. Like I mentioned in previous career modes and whatnot, I have sometimes struggled when I've come here. Um, Burnley are not an easy side to score against. They, 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 you know, a lot of the plot it's given to them for their defending. Um, today, though, it was not really on show. So you have to admit, it all started with that goal there. Going in, um, Kingsley Coman's header, of course. Heaton coming into no man's land. Vinicius Jr. hat-trick in the end. Good day at the office. I just went to check as well to see how old Tom Heaton actually is now in our save. 
and he's 37, so he's 37 and still playing with Burnley. Um, of course, in real life, I believe he's just joined Villa, hasn't he? But um, yeah, so quite surprised to really see that. Our final game of the day, though, comes against Bradford in the FA Cup, the third round. It should be a routine victory, but I'm not going to um, I'm not going to take any risks. I'm still going to be playing pretty much a strong team that will feature most likely quite a lot of first teamers. The only ones really that I don't think will play are the ones who just featured in that last game. So yeah, Leon Bailey's going to come back in. Um, I'll swap it around and I'll be back for the game. There's nothing better than FA Cup football. This is the Bradford 11 that we're going to be facing. Um, our team is very strong as well. Uh, the only real surprising additions maybe, Pizala, Smith in at midfield. He has played for us before, um, but he, I didn't expect him to feature at all this season. Herrera's also going to be starting out on the left wing instead of up front. Patrick Catrone will take the spot as uh, the striker. But Herrera has played on the wing as well, so it won't be anything new to him. Pretty sure he played on the wing for us at De Krafjap a couple of times. Um, and against Bradford, he should get a lot of luck in this game, especially cutting in on his right foot to maybe have a few shots. But you can't beat FA Cup football, and we're looking to beat Bradford on our way to doing the quadruple with the FA Cup included. The game is off and running, playing at Ivy Lane, which of course isn't their ground. It's um, game generated, but it's a big place. So, yeah, hoping for not a cup upset, which does happen from time to time, but I'm hoping today it won't happen. Honestly, we're 39 minutes into this game and we've had nothing really worthy of showing you in the way of a chance. Bradford have actually proved to be one of the more difficult opponents this episode thus far. Mason Mount going to find Smith. Can we finally get a chance now? Catrone looking for La Celso. Herrera going to continue. Lovely football. Is this a chance we're waiting for? Herrera's ball in. Bradford stand firm again and defend it. And that's been something they've done pretty much so far this game as we can't keep possession either. Mount's not going to win that back. And Bradford are actually posing... Not too much of a threat going forward, but defensively, I'm not even trolling. I'm actually struggling a little bit. Catrone through towards Leon Bailey. Is this finally the chance we were waiting for? Leon Bailey shot off the upright. He put so much power on that that he went onto the bar and out. Half-time whistle. Bradford nil. Everton nil. And the only thing to show you from that first half of football was that. We've had a couple of half chances, but nothing major. To say I'm frustrated... It'll be an understatement. Bradford so far, their game plan's working. I do not want a replay. Great skill from Leon Bailey, but is there an end product? As he drives inside the area, and yes, there is. That's the moment we were waiting for. It's finally come, and it's come from a player who has been brilliant this season. Not so brilliant today, though. He had one that hit the bar, and he's just had this one that's gone in the top corner. And finally, Bradford, we've managed to find the goal against them. It took a little bit of quality. That's the turn from Bay, uh, Bay as he gets inside the box. And there's the finish. No chance for the goalkeeper. But you expect that, man. You, you kind of... I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, maybe... I don't think you're disrespected him by any means. You can see that by the team selection that I've put out there. We've certainly not hit fifth gear today at all. Um, and like I said, Bradford have not really given us too much to think about defensively, but... They've stood firm for large parts of the game. Don't even tell me the first time they get a chance, it's actually going to be a goal. Ball in towards the box. Mason Holgate heads it away. Thank goodness. 15 minutes remain as Kieran Tierney puts the ball in towards the box. Headers there. And it's 2-0 Everton. Patrick Catrone's got it. He's had a poor game as well, if I'm being honest with you. I will say, though, Bradford, you can be proud of yourselves. You've certainly done your fans very, very proud. They've put in a shift here today. And it's a scoreline, which on paper isn't even embarrassing for them. We've been not very good, but yeah, they can be proud of their players, the, the home fans, because they've put in a shift. They've tried to make sure it was a tough game for us. And to be fair, out of the three games we played in the live part of today's episode, this probably was the most tough out of the three in terms of actually trying to score. So I have nothing but praise for them. They've been brilliant here today. 14 minutes to go until we're through to an FA Cup fourth round. And we're going to have to play better than we have done here. Trones ball through to Vinicius Jr. for number three. And just like that, it gets even worse. Now you're going to have to be careful, Bradford. I've just been heaped it praise on you for holding out for so long. And now it's looking like this could be worse. 3-0 now, Vinicius Jr. I mean, when you're playing against Leon Bailey, Patrick Catrone, and Vinicius Jr., who could well be one of the best attacking trios in the world, and they're not even our best attacking trio. It is pretty difficult to defend, but 
after I've heaped praise on them, I don't want this to get embarrassing for them. Like, they've done really well. They don't deserve a 3 0 or even a 4 0 scoreline. So, yeah, it's weird to see this. I mean, Catron could actually get in again. Vinicius Jr. going to be found, pulling it back on the right foot. Shot comes in. Great save, goalkeeper. Bay there. 4 0 Everton. Exactly what I'm just talking about, guys. The minute to play here. Three goals in nine minutes is the reason we're now 4 0 up. It's Sean Scannell, I believe that is. With Bradford's first shot of the game, that was. So fair play. There's still been oh actually a second here because there might be another chance. Ball up towards the uh, attackers. Zala cuts it out, and that's not a great pass. That kind of shows you how bad we've been as well. There's the shots. Thought that was going to be it. I genuinely thought Bradford were going to get a consolation, which they really do deserve in the game. To be fair, with how they've done, but four 0 victors in the end. We're through to the fourth round. We avoid a cup upset, and um, hopefully we'll be a bit better going forward. Saying that, as, as we've just won four 0 but you guys understand where we're coming from with how long it took us to really. Begin to find the fluidity in our play and you compare who we actually had out there as well. Yeah, I was I was hoping for maybe a bit more from them. But nevertheless, no upset. We're into the next round. And to begin next episode, we've got the, the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. So, fantastic. Friends, that is going to be the end for today's episode. A massive thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. A massive thank you as well for all the support that you guys show me. It's incredible to see. If you are around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. We try to upload every single day. There definitely will be daily uploads coming out when FIFA 20 comes out. Don't you worry about that. Uh, of course, only 14 days away now from EA Access, which is going to be unbelievable. Can't wait to start playing the game. Um, like I mentioned earlier, do leave me a comment for any teams you might want to see me start with. Um, just do note that I might not pick, obviously, your team. I can't pick everybody's team or whatnot. So, yeah, at the moment, I haven't decided. I'm still trying to work out who I really want to go with, what league I want to start in, and all of that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, do keep the comments coming. A massive thank you, like I said, for the support, as always. Until next time, have a fantastic evening. Have a fantastic day, wherever it is you guys are. I wonder if the FA Cup draw has been made, so we can take a look at that before we go. No, not yet, so I'll have to wait until the next episode. But until then, I'll see you all soon. Adios.